but she's making a massive, massive course correction since March 19th. She's signaling, the mothership is, is signaling the navigational coordinates, as it were, from Earth back to the Pleromic Center. And as she turns, she's cracking and heaving. You know, I was in, I was on a freighter once for three days in a typhoon in the South China Sea. And I can tell you, there were 60 foot swells. And when a boat is in that kind of water and it, and it moves and through those massive swells, it cracks. It, you know, a boat is cons consists of, of, uh, plates, just like the earth, plates that are welded together. The plates crack and warp and groan. And this is not a birth process. This is the process of the great mothership Earth correcting her course and bringing herself around to port and around toward galactic center. That would be my metaphor. Thank you, John. And the, se the second question from Green Meadow is, what is planetary tantra? Hmm. Planetary Tantra is the way to connect and bond with Gaia through the bioelectromagnetic field that is her Kundalini and her energetic force. And it is the way to bond consciously and deliberately to bond your body, which is a bioelectromagnetic antenna, to hers through the iron in your blood. The iron in your blood that's streaming in your blood, in your hemoglobin right now, constitutes a kind of antenna, a fluid antenna. As you, as you stand there or sit there, the blood in your veins forms an antenna. And that antenna is picking up signals and can transmit as well to the elect bioelectromagnetic environment, which is the body. Of, of the surface of Gaia's uh, world, her skin, as it were. She's got us under her skin. She's got the human species under her skin. <laughs> and uh, planetary tantra is the way to make that connection conscious and deliberate and intentional. It's the way to communicate telepathically with her. It's a two-way communication back and forth, but largely consists of taking instruction directly from the planetary goddess, taking instruction, which the Gnostics called the divine mathesis. And that was the point, that was the secret of what they did in these mysteries. You know, the secret that has never been told before, it wasn't never been told verbally or publicly. Planetary Tantra also has a lot to do with desire and pleasure. It is a way to realize the most powerful uh, expression of your own self and your true desires and your capacity for pleasure and bliss and rapture through this Sophianic connection. It is a way to be guided by the Sophianic vision story and at the same time to be, uh, to be a, uh, a participant and collaborator in that story. It is the portal, portal to our involvement in Gaia's correction and in her return to uh, communication with the Galactic Center. Thank you, John. And the final question from Green Meadow is, the pagans had a very different view of sex. How do you define healthy sexuality? And how can sex be used in healing? <laughs> well, I finally get to talk about sex. It's taken me years now before somebody asked me a question about sex. Um, <laughs> I'm thrilled. Um, okay, listen, healthy sexuality is, first of all, honest sexuality. And that means that there is a moment in life when you can make a commitment to your sexuality by understanding that it is an instrument of Gaia herself. It is, it is, a, it is an instrument of her own desire. And that's why I call uh, Sophia, Sophia, because it rhymes with desire. Uh, and desire is a very important force for Sophia. It's even, in a way, more important than, than love. I don't talk 
a much that much about love in planetary tantra, although the factor is there. But the really driving force is desire. And one way that I describe planetary tantra is that it's a, it's a power-sharing arrangement between a human being and a superhuman being. But sexually, it's a arrangement of three entities. The most healthy, powerful, honest, open, dynamic, and healing form of sex would be the sex between two people who triangulate with the third point, which is the planet itself. That is today, that is to say, the understanding that the sexual energy, and, and not for biological procreation, by the way, this is completely non-procreative, the sexual energy, and the bliss, and the excitement, and the heightening of your senses that comes from sexual contact belongs in her dynamic. And so doing it in a connection with the earth is doing it at a much, much higher octave of, of sexuality. And, of course, it is healing because, uh, you know, sex is like you can go into samadhi in sex. You can go into trance. On metahistory.org, I pointed out that the state of deep immersion, cellular immersion, that you reach with the use of uh, shamanic plants is very similar to the deep body immersion you can reach through really good, intense sexual experiences. So sexuality and shamanism need to be brought together and reconciled to something that hasn't really been done so far, as far as I can tell. But there are tremendous possibilities, and I call the sexual dimension of planetary tantra, I call that Kala Tantra, because it's particularly connected with the goddess Kali. Thank you, John. That's great. John, just a quick question on that. First of all, um, I think you can also go into different states of um, samadhi, I guess, going to the restroom or the toilet. Um, but in, in regards to um, this uh, question, um, I've lost my mind, actually. I've forgotten about it. Um, basically, with... Uh, Actually, I've kind of lost it. Sorry about that. We'll go on to the next section. Um, sure. We'll go on. We'll go on to yeah. the. Um, we'll go on to the sections on the archons. Patrick. Sure. I just love to make a comment though on what you just said, if I might. Go ahead. About samadhi, uh, on the way to the toilet or washing the dishes. Yes. I, in a sense, that's true. You know, I think that it's important for people to understand. People who are interested in mystical experience that. Uh, Cosmic consciousness can happen to someone spontaneously. You don't have to practice yoga for years. You don't even need to practice anything. It is there waiting to happen. It's a mystical experience waiting to happen. So uh, you can go into samadhi, but the real kick is what you bring out of samadhi. That's the trick. So many people do spontaneously go into mystical experiences and they have what Stan Groff calls spiritual emergencies and they may momentarily reach a heightened uh, states of heightened awareness and so forth but that's not enough it's what you bring out of it that matters what you bring out from it what you bring back to the world where you live where you interact with other people and how you apply that higher consciousness to uh, the life around you. That's that's the that's the key. Thanks, John. Um, actually, I just remembered my question in regards to planetary tantra. So, I guess if you want to be in union with um, you know, with your partner and the Earth, I guess doing it at certain times, such as the solstice or the equinox, and I guess through rituals, which um, we know that the powers that be actually do rituals, is probably some way of getting closer and increasing the experience. Well, we're getting into some really uh, hot-button subjects here, aren't we? Uh, first of all, I want to say I have really have big doubts about that. I think the powers that be are getting very much overhyped and have been built them. So they, they must pay for the PR that builds them up into some kind of masterminds who are mind-controlling uh, the human species. I don't really buy that proposition. But we might get into that later when we're talking about the archons. Uh, 
There is no ritual. You know, pagans used to do sexual uh, activities at the uh, summer solstice and at certain times of the year, like the 1st of May, because they felt that the, uh, correctly so, that the sexual or erotic forces of the earth uh, were higher at that time. But the, uh, the practices of planetary tantra and kala tantra do not uh, go in that direction at all. They're entirely different, and they do not... They are not ritualistic. They do not use uh, Kama Sutra type sexual poses. Uh, timing would be a factor, but they're entirely different than anything that has been practiced uh, so far. Thank you, John. Okay, we'll sure. move on to we'll move on to the Archon section. Patrick, you have a question for John. Yes. Good evening, John. Hi there. Uh, there's no real clean way to segue from sex or tantric sex to Archons, but we'll give it a shot. <laughs> yeah. Now, I know that you don't like to dwell on our accounts, but we have a couple questions. And this one struck me while, while I was watching your CD, Sophia Returning. Sure. You, dis you discuss how the, in the intent of the Archons is to have humanity live through false or replicate means, most notably through those provided by advances of technology. And the Gnostics warned that we might deviate from our optimal course of evolution when we get lost in mental fabrications. And aside from pornography and other issues we can discuss as a follow-up, I'd like to pose a question regarding our function on the WebBot forum. Sure. You, you touched on your knowledge of the WebBots, but in the context of Archonic Control, what are your thoughts about following predictive linguistics, which is forecasting future events by analyzing changes on Internet language, or any other means of technology that could be popularized and used to guide human behavior. And doesn't it make sense for humans to use the Internet as a place to sniff out current and future states of affairs? In your opinion, where and how does one draw the line? Well, wow, that's a damn good question, my friend. And I have to tell you that uh, I can't answer it authoritatively because I'm not as deep into the medium as you. Uh, I suffer from a certain handicap is that I'm not in, just deeply involved with the Internet and how it works. <clears throat> I just use it to, to, to make phone calls and, and do interviews. And as far as I was, I'm concerned, if it just, if it just served as a, 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 uh, an, ex, an information exchange system and a way to talk to people around the world and a, and a global radio device, I'd be very happy. Uh, I, I confess my inadequacies here. But I, I do get the question, and it is very relevant to our understanding of the archonic factor in our own minds. Okay? So I'm going to give you my best shot at answering the question. Why shouldn't we use the Internet to uh, delve into uh, the, the technology of the Internet and IT, informational technology, to delve into the workings of our minds? Because we don't need it. And there's a much better way and a more direct way to do it a cleaner way, a much more exciting way, and a way that allows us to be directly interactive with the source of our minds. You see, right now, and, 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 and in any instance, when you get more and more involved in this IT technology and these devices and programs and installations, every one of them is a prosthetic device that's taking you away from your own natural mind. And it's my understanding that our, that the natural mind of the human species, it, the mind body, the body mind body, I don't just mean the intellectual head mind, the natural body mind instrument of the human species is the highest technology on earth. Your body, your sense